Hi, everyone, and thank you for listening to episode one, season three of the Darn IT podcast. I'm your host, Darnley G, CEO of Darn IT Group. Now, as they always say, a new year, new you, but instead, I'm more of the inclination of new year, new podcast. Now, I've always endeavored to always try to stay abreast of the the tactics of podcasting. And some of you may be listening to this on our podcast, but some of you may now be watching this on YouTube, which is awesome. So most of our formats will now be um, this usual same old, same old. However, we're going to be doing this on YouTube as well. So I hope any of you who are watching the first time on YouTube, thanks for stopping by. We're going to have fun. Uh, this is the first time that we're moving from a, a voice only blog or vlog or podcast to a audio visual as well. So we'll be doing some cool things on the video side um, and we'll just keep doing the same sort of thing we've done on the podcasts for the last year. I want to just do a quick shout out to all my listeners that have been listening to this podcast in the last 365 days. I've made a commitment to the best I can to give you as much audio content, um, deliveries of everything and anything to do with cybersecurity, IT security of the likes. But I want you to realize that, that it's, it's people like you who drive me to do this and continue to provide that content and do cool things now moving on to a different platform to basically show you, demonstrate, and uh, essentially just give you the incentives of continuing to come back. And I hope you enjoy this. I really hope you enjoy this new format. Um, and I really encourage anyone who wants to, to see more to join on YouTube. And just for the record, um, I just love the fact that I have listeners all over the world, uh, countries like um, obviously where I'm from, Canada, from United States, to Latin America, to Europe, uh, to Japan, and also Africa. So there's been a great, great change in the amount of listeners uh, in my podcast over the last 365 days. And that just continues to increase and expand over the many uh, weeks and months. So I really hope you like this format. I really hope the my viewers on YouTube enjoy this and I will continue in, in endeavoring to really create that content. Now, I, I may not be always to guarantee every a week, but I'll do my best to, to do what I can because I'm also editing on audio as much as video. So that does take some extra time and it really doesn't uh, take two seconds to do that. So anyone who's inclined, We'll understand that this does take time, so I would appreciate your patience, uh, but also your continuous uh, listening, your votes, your confidence in me to deliver that news. So let's get on with this, with our, our episode here. So let's this episode will focus around 2020 in sort of a year review and what my predictions forecast will be for 2021. Now, honestly, 2020 was a very interesting year. 2020 was a very interesting year, not just for us as individuals, as a society, but also as a business and as cybersecurity. So everything kind of just went apart. Everything just ripped apart and we really looked at our society as a whole. But most importantly, where the issues sprung from when it came to cyber threats really kind of changed the pace of our lives significantly. So the transition from the uh, new normal, as you will, from uh, working from an office nine to five, from transitioning to a work from home environment. Now, this is this has really changed the game, not just for us and how we do our everyday work, but most importantly for those in the security field, the, the change of going from um, protecting your castle, you have your moat, you have your castle walls, you got the drawbridge, I'm using metaphors, but going from that to, um, you know, every, every person for themselves. So that fundamental change really significantly changed the dynamic of how security experts and IT experts 
manage their employees. Now, no matter if you were a small business or a large business, really the same issues have come to play. Issues like how do we get our remote users to connect to our internal resources? How do we transition from on-premise to on-cloud? These discussions were had in many boardrooms during the pandemic all over the world. So a lot of businesses had to, to change. And it's not just basically the, the processes, it's also how we did things when it came to communication and meetings. There was a huge push or change and shift, as you will, from um, mundane um, board uh, boardroom meetings to more Zoom calls or Hangouts or any of these video conferencing applications exploded literally overnight because businesses were looking at ways to incorporate these platforms to their everyday workings. And a lot of people who ha or were not used to video conferencing and were a bit more apprehensive of using it, they are now doing this every day of their lives. This is this is the, the new normal, as you will. So there is there is more emphasis on top of video conferencing, there has been more emphasis on cloud-based technologies. So a lot of the on-premise applications would probably or perhaps costed businesses more money to manage and maintain. So now most of them are shifting their data from on-premise to on the cloud. So that fundamentally changed the way that IT professionals and security professionals alike manage the shift from work to home. And, and I can uh, speak on my experience here um, was there was a big shift and big demand from our clients at Darn IT Group that wanted to work from home. And that shift happened relatively quickly. And some businesses either didn't have the capital or didn't have the level of expertise to switch them over. So they relied on businesses like ours to essentially move them from point A to point C. Um, it took them a while to get the, the right technologies, the right hardware, um, the right processes in place uh, to get them from point A to point C. But it's also, it's also not just, make, let me make this clear, it's not just a technological shift. It's a psychological shift. It's a environmental shift. So when a business has been operating for X amount of years, the company culture is a certain way. And most businesses who moved from office only environment to a work from home environment, there was a huge shift that needed to be done. And that huge shift caused a lot of turmoil, a lot of agony, whatever, in terms of going from point A to point C. But most especially were the employees that didn't know better, that they're now going away from those work environments and now going back to their home. And as you know, home has a more personal feel to it. Usually people can can segment home and work. And the nine to five individuals didn't seem to kind of get that. That that shift was very, um, uh, very strong and demanding on them because that shift significantly changed the way that they viewed work and they had to make their own work environment. They either work in their living room or they had to make an office. They work in their basement or work in their car or in their garage, whatever. But that fundamental change really enveloped the work culture, really enveloped the work environment. So that's kind of where we've seen those changes in terms of that um, transition period from 2020 now to 2022. Now, in 2020, to say 2022, I meant 2021. I apologize. I apparently want to get rid of this year. Uh, <laughs> it just barely even started. So the, the, the fact of the matter is that the the change and shift now has kind of been the new normal. Now most businesses are working from home. That transition has already happened. And there's some in limbo right now, don't get me wrong. But that a fundamental shift is, is now there. So now with all of this, where do cyber criminals fit in all this? Well, let me tell you that in the beginning of this, we've seen in the security industry a huge shift of... COVID-19 or coronavirus related malware increase exponentially in around the March 2020 era because cyber criminals knew that that shift was happening and they understood that mostly the most of the fact that people move and everything was so haphazard um it, it was done sort of Mickey Mouse as you will that really the 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 actual concept of security 
wasn't there. It was more about just get the equipment out there, just get people out there just to work ASAP before this gets worse. And and that is essentially what happened. And and most businesses just did it because of necessity. It happened because um, depending on where they were in the world, that their governments mandated that they move, you know, move from home and people can't work from large scale uh, business towers and business environments. So businesses priority were just to be functional. And it, more of the, the security aspect was sort of layered on afterwards. So you didn't really see much of an emphasis on security. Now, bigger businesses did because they realized that there's a lot of people, but mostly the smaller, medium businesses didn't really grasp it that well. And um, they layered it on. They just wanted to, to A, function and B, layer it on. So you would see a, a nice fundamental shift that way. But the increase of malware, which is uh, malicious applications, Ransomware, which I'm sure all of you know who've been a great listener, but who who don't know what malware is, especially is essentially a piece of software that runs through a computer system, a network infrastructure that encrypts files and holds them for ransom, and phishing attacks. So that would be through the phone, through email, uh, through text messaging. These attacks increase significantly during the onset of of the pandemic. Now we'll talk quickly about the cyber attack news in terms of sort of what happened to certain companies. The the latest and greatest was from SolarWinds, um, and, and this this is near and dear to my heart as well, um, because SolarWinds is is actually one of our our vendors. Now they got one of their applications breached, um, and it's come out that um, through. Uh, certain federal sources in the United States that it was done by Russian threat actors. Um, but they targeted um, U.S. military installations, uh, the Pentagon, various universities all over the world, different businesses, small and large, throughout the world as well, for about eight to nine months. They were in there utilizing these applications for eight to nine months. That's a very long time. And that's really indicative with, with any sort of cyber criminal that has access to infrastructure where they may not necessarily deliver payloads right off the get-go where they would sit down in the corner and just monitor everything and just sit sort of in the shadows and eventually uh, launch their attack once they get a good grasp of the environment that they're in or whichever data they collect. Um, the next one was Twitter. Um, now, this was done by a spear phishing attack. So they attack people like, um, you know, Bill Gates, Apple, um, Obama, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, and Warren Buffett. So these were some of the people who were targeted um, through Twitter. And for those who don't know what Twitter is, it's a, a sort of instant messaging platform that is in public. And a lot of these users are active on social media. And essentially, they're, they're, um, the spear phishing was made so that they can get their accounts compromised, so that they can display information on their Twitter accounts because they have quite a large following. The next one is MGM Resorts. They they uh, were breached twice, once in 2018, and the, the next time in 2020, there was about 5.2 million hotel guests, um, personally identifiable information that were lost and, and, and stolen. Um, another one, and I talked about this earlier, was Zoom. Now, Understand that Zoom wasn't designed to take the amount of capacity that sort of influxed in the beginning of the pandemic. You know, Zoom was just essentially designed, as they say, for smaller businesses. And Zoom was another alternative solution for the, the myriad of, of, of video conferencing applications out there. They were the, the most affordable, um, but they didn't have their security game on par. They just basically worked focused on the um, distribution aspect of their, of their Zoom product. And they didn't really focus on security. So what caused this was a lot of people were using their application. They did not design this application to be fully secure and robust. The fact that uh, classrooms, groups, everything was getting intercepted, um, interrupted, etc. of the likes. And it really wasn't... Um, indicative to the security community because they didn't have their game down. Now, they say that everything's been locked down, which I'm sure it is to, to a point, but it's one of the things where threat actors will look at these um, vulnerable applications or these vulnerable companies and take advantage of them. 
and and the last one and there's a few others but I'll just I just made a few points here was um, a GDPR suing Oracle and Salesforce um, one of the reasons were for uh, um, cookie tracking consent uh, consent and really um, this is interesting because you know I'm sure all of you, all of you know Salesforce Salesforce and Oracle they're pretty big companies and they violated so this this is really a, a good knee jerk reaction um, to the um, protection of our data and privacy when it comes to corporations um, accumulation of our, our data and tracking us in every way shape or form so this is this is kind of a this this made headlines yes but this makes you think about the extent that these large organizations that are collecting our, our information as we are active online so understand that social engineering data security and, and ransomware, we're like the key players in 2020. So you want to think about sort of 2020, a little quick snapshot would be social engineering, data security, and ransomware. Those were kind of the big players in 2020. And this will continue on until 2021. Um, so what are what lies ahead in 2021? What are some of my predictions? Um, and we'll go from there. So remote workers is a really unique uh, aspect for businesses. It's a unique aspect for any sort of organization, any sort of um, business that was developed during an era where hopping in your car, driving to work was the normal. This really changed the way that IT departments work. It changed the way that security experts worked. And most importantly, that effect affected all of us. It affected our society. And Will I think that's going to change in the near future? Absolutely not. I think things will be status quo for now, uh, regardless of the the vaccines, etc. I just think that this big shift from work from home has really been a culture shock, especially to North Americans, but more or less the the new normal. Because if you think about it in a business mindset, that businesses do not have to. Uh, purchase real estate, commercial real estate anymore. They don't have to have people working at an office. So they, they really can, you know, reduce the amount of their operating costs significantly by having people work from home. And, and that is understandable to an extent, but some people cannot differentiate between work and home. And they have may have laundry to do, they may have to clean the, the, the house or, or do errands, etc. So it's really, it's really changing the very fabric of our culture. And that's us as human beings, but also changing the culture and security. We're now looking at solutions and products and services that will help envelop these remote workers to make sure that they are maintained properly, they're able to work correctively, and also, most importantly, be secure and protect the environment. Now, this also kind of ties into uh, cyber insurance, that there would be an increase in, in a cyber insurance due to the level of exposure people have from working from home. Because you think about all the unknowns that go on to having your employees work from home, you don't know how their infrastructure is, you don't know what they have there or, or, or what sort of variables in terms of their their, their, their kids, their, their spouses, individuals, living condition. There's so many more different variables involved in work from home environments that ID departments and security experts alike cannot really have a concrete plan. Whereas the castle model I just described earlier um, really had all the, the, the check boxes up. So that, that shift culturally, but also in IT will change significantly in, in that manner. Um, I feel ransomware is going to get more sophisticated in, in ways we've unfortunately cannot imagine. You know, we really didn't see a, a big a big change in how ransomware was developed and distributed. The the methods and payloads relatively were the same. Um, but I feel like this is the calm before the storm. I feel like there's going to be a variant that's going to come out that's going to catch all of us by surprise, as they usually do, and perhaps be a cyber coronavirus in, in some ways. I hope I don't coin that and bite myself uh, for saying that. But the, the, the fact is we've seen ransomware kind of on the straight and narrow, but I feel like that's going to change um, going into 2021. There's also the, the, the um, increase of AI, artificial intelligence, but 
also criminals will be using this these platforms against us as well but also not just for a tit for tat operation but also um, poisoning artificial intelligence entering algorithms inside these uh, artificial intelligence codes uh, to be able to do something malicious. So we're going to see more of that in 2021 and, and obviously years ahead of that. There will be bigger investments um, in businesses for security for remote users. Uh, businesses will start developing budgets to um, procure the proper software, the proper technologies to protect their employees from working from home. These technologies do exist, um, they're out there, um, but unfortunately, um, most businesses didn't have the capital expenses, but now we're moving into the new year. They may have budgeted for that and taken that into consideration, seeing as their people may be working from home for a lot longer or permanently. So though you'll see more investments in the technology sector, you'll see more investments in um, these types of services, um, underlying uh, work from home users and remote users. And, and really, the last thing would be more of a cyber awareness campaigns, programs, literature for those work from home, telework, security basics. So businesses are going to be investing a bit more time, money, and energy into training their employees, seeing as they're not working from, from the office any longer, and getting those basics in play. Any progressive or forward-thinking organization will encompass this in their, their work environments and uh, any net new employees that come on board, they essentially be looking at ways to uh, protect themselves, protect their assets in, in some ways. And, and, in, and using the security basics by cyber awareness training programs, platforms, et cetera, or really help solidify the uh, need to have these applications in play consistently so that in the event that a uh, work from home user gets a malicious email, for example, or phone call, uh, there will be a procedure set in place already to take care of that. All right. So thank you so much for uh, watching this episode of Darn IT Podcast, Season 3, Episode 1, um, 2020 in a Year Review. Uh, I'm your host, Darnley G, CEO of Darn IT Group. Safe computing, everybody. Bye.